Okay, we'll move on with uh, offensive coordinator Matt Lubick. Um, first question for coach is from Brian Christofferson, Nebraska 24 7. Hey, coach, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, with, with the new guys who just arrived in the last couple months, like Omar Manning and some of those guys, what's the biggest thing you are stressing in them as a coach uh, with, with limited time here before an opener? What are you, what are you trying to get across to those guys? What are the main, uh, the main uh, points you want uh, them to embrace? Sure. Uh, the, the biggest thing, it sounds kind of simple, is just to do your best. I think guys come in here and uh, they feel a pressure to perform. They put it on themselves. And uh, you can't learn the whole playbook in a day. And we talk about just daily improvement and really uh, focus, focusing on that. Um, when you're a young guy or brand new to the system, you're going to make mistakes. And mistakes are actually a good thing. That's how you learn. And so getting guys to kind of play through that, uh, learn from their mistakes, and just compete on a daily basis. There, there's so much attention on Omar. How have you seen him handle things since he's got there and, and pick things up? Sure. I mean, he's done some good things like, uh, like all our young guys. Um, you know, he's battled a little bit with some nagging injuries, which has slowed him down. We have, we have had a few of those. But, but uh, you know, his attitude's been good, and, and uh, you know, he, he competes. Thank you. Next, next question, uh, Sam McEwen, Omaha World Herald. Go ahead, Sam. Matt, some of this predates your arrival, but there was a lot of commentary, both from Coach Frost and others, that, that Nebraska had to get better around Adrian Martinez last year in order for the offense to sort of maximize who it was going to be. You coordinate the whole thing. I know you're specifically the wide receivers coach, and I'll ask you about that in a second. But in coordinating the whole thing, how much better do you feel like you guys have gotten uh, since the pandemic started, since March? and? And, and where, where else do you guys need to go in order to get better around the quarterback and make his job easier? Sure. Uh, great question. I, you know, the first part of your question, as far as Adrian taking a lot of blame last year or putting pressure on himself, I wasn't here. But I think that always happens to quarterbacks in general is when things are going good, sometimes they get too, too much credit. When things are going bad, they take too much blame. And everyone sees what the quarterback does. But it is. When I, we watch cut-ups of last year's season, it's the people around him. It's the, the line with protections, be able to run the football to take pressure off him in the passing game. It's the receivers getting open. It's, it's the running backs blocking. Uh, it, it was a combination of things, you know, and Adrian did some great things last year. And like everybody, he could have played better. And, and the same with that goes with our whole offense. Uh, I've been really happy, really, with all our quarterbacks, the way they've progressed uh, since we've been here, you know, and, and taking advantage of this, this crazy times when, uh, you know, back in – when the whole country shut down, those guys kept learning. They were on Zoom calls. They kept learning. They were hungry. They were throwing on their own. And you could see that when we finally got back in the summer that those guys have been, you know, working their tails off. And they can just continue to get better and better and better. And, you know, as a coaching staff, part of it's on us. You know, when it, if Adrian performs well, we, we, we got to help him do that by putting him in good situations, by making the read simple, easy, and clear. And that's been one of our big goals as coaches to, to make it as easy as we can, not just for him, but for our offense. Uh, you know, one thing you do as an offense to try to get better is you, you look back in the last season and what, what did we do well? Well, you continue to do that um, and maybe do it a little bit differently. And, and then if there's something you didn't do well, ask why. You know, we always put the first thing on us. Did we coach it well enough? Did we rep it well enough? Is it even worth doing? And then the third thing is you actually look at other teams and do a lot of self-scout and, and studying and seeing if there's something out there that can enhance your system uh, that fits, let's use it. And so it's, it's kind of a combination of things, you know, and it starts with us and then, then getting our, uh, our, our players to fall in line with it. Uh, my other question is this. You, you've had a lot of experience in a, ri a variety of offenses, not just the Oregon spread, but at Washington with Chris Peterson's offense at Duke, at Arizona State. So you've seen a lot of different things. Are there things about a pro-style or a more pro-style offense that you'd like to incorporate into what, what Nebraska does, specifically with your running backs and trying to get downhill with, with some really big backs like Mills and Tompkins and, and Scott? Sure. You know, that's a great question. The thing I love about this offense is, is we're able to adapt to our talent. Um, and so we, we do have some components of a pro-style uh, we're able to run the ball downhill, but we're also able to get the ball to our playmakers in space. And we, we got to continue to do that. 
and that's one of the things I've always loved about this, you know, dating all the way back to Oregon, it's just a flexibility. I mean, we, we have all the run game that you'd see from an NFL team on Sundays, you know, and we, we have the ability to drop back and throw it. And then we also have the ability to read guys in the run game and, and get off a lot of plays and do it fast. And uh, now you're always trying to get better, but that, that's the best thing about this symptom or this system is how, uh, how flexible it is. Next up uh, from Hale Varsity, Derek Peterson. Hey, Matt, you guys are about 20 days out from the start of your season, and just in terms of, of chemistry and familiarity between your quarterbacks and your wide receivers. Where are you at in relation to where you would normally like to be this close to a season? I think we're in a really good place. Uh, I've seen it just from an improvement standpoint. Our guys have taken advantage of the time. They threw a lot on their own when they could. Um, I, I think the guys are, have done a lot of stuff with this pandemic off the field and bonded in that way. And uh, I think we're, we're on the same page. Now it's more of a matter because we haven't been able to go to pads until just now. And so it's get, getting that same timing that we've had without pads with pads and getting Chris with blocking and tackling and, and throwing in pads. Uh, and that's, again, that just starts right now. But I really have, you know, we've installed our offense. Um, now we're reinstalling our offense. So I, I feel we're in a good place. You know, I know we missed spring ball like a lot of other college football teams did, but the, the pandemic, I mean, our, our guys handled it great, you know, with, with extra opportunity to do things on their own. Follow up for you with Greg Austin having the, the run game coordinator title. How do you guys kind of play off each other and what's that working relationship like? Sure, well, first off, you know, he, he's a, an unbelievable coach. Uh, one of the best I've been around. Um, it's just, you know, I, I think not just Greg, but with all our coaches, it's there isn't like, hey, this guy's totally responsible for this. This guy's totally responsible for this. It's like we're all in this together, and we all bounce ideas off each other um, constantly on a daily basis. But he, he's an amazing guy to work with, uh, has a lot of experience in the system. Um, you know, I, I love his personality, and I love him as a person, but the way he gets his players to play hard um, and buy into the system it's as, as good as it gets. I mean, he's one of the best in the business. Uh, Lincoln Journal star, Thanks. Parker Gabriel. Hey, Matt. Um, we heard Jack Stoll say a few minutes ago that um, Alante Brown, when he plays at full speed, um, that he's really tough to stop. What have you seen from him for being a true freshman, and, and, and what kind of impression has he specifically you know, made on you in the, in the time that you've got to spend together? Sure. You know, I think his attitude and how hungry he is to get better has definitely impressed the coaches, but his teammates. Uh, he always stays after and, you know, catches balls. He, uh, he's done a ton of work in the summertime just to learn the offense. So he's a brand new guy that's not just new to Nebraska. He hadn't played receiver before. So everything's new to him, technique, scheme, plays, terminology. And to, do, to actually have a chance to play when you're in that position, you have to put a lot of time in on your own, and, and he did that. And just, you know, just his attitude and, and his nonstop wanting to get better is going to make him a really good player, not to mention he has a ton of talent. Uh, KETV, Andy Kendi. Hey, Matt, I was just curious, what is um, the level of separation between your quarterbacks, between Adrian and Luke, and how much uh, pressure has Luke put on Adrian uh, uh, so far? Well, I, I think it's, uh, to answer your question, they're both playing at a high level. And, you know, I don't know if I, I look at it as pressure. I think they're both making each other better. Uh, we feel good about both guys right now. We really do. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know, with, uh, with Masker and, and, and Logan, our freshmen, playing really well too, we feel like we've got great depth at that position. But they're, they've both improved a ton, just the understanding of what we're trying to teach them since I've been here. And their attitude's been great. Uh, they're as humble as guys, humble as quarterbacks as I've been around. You know, they always want to give credit to other people. And, and uh, you know, they're team players. And so we feel really good about both of them. If, if I could follow up, just but there's no question. Coach Frost talked about possibly them being an open competition in the spring. But there's no question that Adrian's your guy moving forward and that, that, that Luke is behind him at this point, correct? Yeah, I mean, Adrian's a starter as of today. But I, like I said, Luke has done a great job, and it's, it's, a, it's a friendly competition. Competition makes both guys better. 
And uh, we feel like we've, we've repped both of them with the ones. They both moved the ball. They've both had, uh, you know, great camps so far, you know, with the non-padded stuff. And so that, that, that evaluation is always ongoing. But, uh, but Adrian's improved, and he's, and he's going to be a better football player this year. Aaron Sorensen, Hale Varsity. Hey, Coach. Um, just knowing that you won't have fans in the stands, both home and away, what are some of the challenges that the offense faces adjusting to that? And how do you prepare them for that, both in your game plan, but also just getting them ready to go out there knowing they won't have a crowd? Yeah, great, great question. Um, from an offensive standpoint, game mechanics it probably helps us because an offense, you know, you want to think, uh, you like to communicate pre-snap. Um, so it helps us in a way where, where it kind of hurts the whole team in general sometimes is your energy. You know, the, we're so lucky here. We've got the best fan base in college football. And the, when our crowd's going nuts, our players feed off that. And it, and it gives you energy. And we have a tremendous home field advantage. So that's, that's a definite downside. Uh, how we're preparing for it is we're actually practicing like that. We're practicing in the stadium, you know, when it's empty, um, getting our guys used to what it's going to feel like. And so, you know, the biggest thing that we're trying to do is create our own energy. And you do that by executing and, and making plays. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to miss the Nebraska fans yelling and screaming for us. Kevin Suits, Channel 10 11. Hi, Matt. 2020 has been crazy for about everybody, but for you, new job, new location, new home. Now, how have you personally managed just the transition and then uh, dealing with everything that's happened here this year? Yeah, uh, yeah, like you said, it's been crazy on everybody. I think you just got to you make the best of the situation. I've been fortunate here that I'm around good people every day. And so that's been really good. You know, the, the isolation for me, you know, I'm, I'm a single guy, so it's like, I, I thrive on being around uh, my coaches and our and our team, and, and they make it. I think that's what everyone wants. Everyone misses in, the, in these times is being around good people. Um, you know, the hard, the hard part for me is just I'm very close to my family back in Colorado, not being able to see my parents. You know, because just the the quarantine, they're at a risk age, and so just dealing with that. But I talk to them every day on the phone, um, and I feel I think all our players do. I think they feel really supported by one another. And, uh, and, and the same goes for the coaches. Got time for two or three more here with Coach. Uh, Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Matt. Um, I know you had a chance uh, last year to, uh, to watch this offense, and I'm sure I've studied it more through, uh, through the offseason. Interested in your perspective um, on the offensive line and how you saw those guys come together from being a young group um, at the beginning of last season to, to where they're at, where they were at in the off season and, you know, what your observations have been, um, this fall as you, as, uh, they, you know, they've started to put the pads on. Yeah. I, I think they're a strength of our football team. You know, we've got some proven players there. Uh, we've got great depth there and, you know, we're, we, as an offense, we want to be balanced. We want to be able to throw the balls where they got to pass protect. And we also want to be able to run the ball. Um, run the ball in the perimeter and be able to run the ball downhill. And they've done it all at this camp. And so I've been really pleased with them, and I think they're the strength of our offense. Lincoln Journal star, Steve Sippel. Hi, Coach. Hi, coach. Um, <clears throat> you've seen Jurgens now in practice, the center. Um, I'm, I assume his explosion is evident to you. How can that, how can that help your offense? Well, yeah, it's a great point. He's very explosive. Uh, you know, he used to be a tight end, so tremendous athlete at center. Uh, in a lot of ways, you know, he, he, we, he, you want an athletic center because he has to make a ton of adjustments. You know, we feel like we can pull him. Uh, he's really good at getting off combo blocks to the next level. Um, and he's also very smart. You know, center, besides the quarterback, is the one position that makes all the checks in our offense. And you get really good with that with experience. And so last year was his first year being center. He's going to be a ton better there just from the mental standpoint. And I think we'll all, we'll all see that when football starts happening. Thank you. And last one for Coach Lubick, uh, Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Hey, Coach, I'm just curious, how do you manage this fall camp? And normally you get to have a lot of live work, a lot of live scrimmages, or three weeks away. 
um, from your opener against Ohio State. How do you find the right blend of to the ground tackling and live scrimmage work over these next three weeks? Sure. Great, great question. You know, we talk about that as a coaching staff every day. Uh, we feel really good where we're at right now as far as just mentally, you know, installed our whole offense, um, guys getting on the same page. Uh, but now we're in pads. And like you, the biggest thing in pads is we got to stay healthy. We got to stay healthy, but we also got to be a, be a, become better blockers, better tacklers, and, and be able to execute in pads. Coach Frost does a tremendous job on kind of balancing that. You know, each day we talk about, hey, are we hitting here too much? Um, should, are we not hitting enough? And we it's kind, of, it's kind of a work in progress, daily gauge. But right now, the fact that we're going in pads, we, we got to get crisp. Because at the end of the day, football is about blocking and tackling. And you can only do so much when you're not in pads. You can get a ton of mental stuff done when you're not in pads. But now it's, it's balancing that and staying healthy. And you know, to answer your question, we talk about it every day. I don't know if there's a perfect answer. Uh, knock on wood, we're very healthy right now, and I think we've done a great job. And our guys, I'll, I'll, it's a tribute to our guys because we've been able to practice in non-pads as close as you can to go in contact with non-pads. And to do that, uh, both sides of the ball got to protect each other because um, you can go full speed and tag off and still practice the, the proper tackle angles, uh, you know, standing the guy up. But, and you still want to be competitive, but you got to do that when you protect your teammates. And so that's a big part of it, too, is, hey, you know, yeah, we want to win games and, and we want to be competitive. And we, we talk about this all the time, too, as far as competing. You know, our, our offense and defense are competing against each other. We haven't started putting in our game plan stuff yet. Um, the harder our offense competes, the better it makes our defense and vice versa. So we, are, we look at it this way. We're not competing against each other. We're competing for each other. And, and they really bought into that. And so... We're going to keep on doing that. We're going to definitely mix in some live stuff because, you know, our first game is will be a test. You know, we're looking forward to, and there's, there's no there's no warm ups, and I think everyone's dealing with that. And so we got to you know have the right amount of scrimmage reps, the, the right amount of game situations, uh, not just tackling, but like specific situations, third and short, red zone, uh, clutch, four minute backed up. Th those are all the things that we're thinking about that could happen in a game. That we're that we talk about every day, and we keep working on. All right, thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll get the other two assistants in here shortly. Thanks, guys.